And now we want to find the, the range of this function f of x equal to x to the fifth power minus 3, then all of them divided by 2. Right. So to find the range of this function, we need to find the domain of the inverse of this function, right? Great. So you just find the inverse of this function, then you look at the domain of that inverse. So the inverse of this function, or to find the inverse of this function, we have to go through the following steps. The first is by replacing f of x with y. So in place of f of x, we just put the y, right? Okay. So I'm going to write this as x to the fifth power minus 3 then divided by 2. So the next thing we have to do is to interchange x and y. So in place of x, I'm going to put y, and in place of y, we'll just write x. So that will give us x is equal to y to the fifth power minus 3 then divided by 2. All right. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is to solve the equation for y, all right? So we try to make y subject of formula from this equation. So um, to make y stand alone, we need to get rid of this 2, and then we need to get rid of this 3. All right, so since this 2 is in the denominator, to get rid of that, we need to multiply both sides by 2. So that gives us 2x is y to the fifth power minus 3. And then the next thing we'll do here is to add 3 to both sides, right? So we'll have 2x plus 3 is y to the fifth power. Right, good. Okay, and now to make y to be on alone on one side, we need to take the fifth root of both sides. Okay, so by taking fifth root of both sides, we just get back y only. So that will mean that y will be the fifth root of 2x plus 3. Right, good. And then this new y is called the inverse of the given function f of x. So this new y here, that we're having y to be fifth root of something, is the inverse of the original function given. So we can denote it as f inverse of x to be the fifth root of 2x plus 3. All right, good. And then, since we've gotten the inverse of that function, then we need to find the range of this function. That will, be, that will mean that we need to find the um, domain of that inverse, all right? So the set of all real numbers that will make this function to be defined will be the domain of this function, which is actually the inverse of this other one. Okay, so this is, um, this is a function that contains some radicals. We have fifth root or something. Now, the fifth root of a particular thing is defined for every input, whether negative input or um, non-negative input. All right. So by that, I mean when we have a square root of some number, let's say we have a square root of a negative number, square of negative 2, we want to find other real numbers or what a real number. When we multiply it with itself two times, we're going to have negative 2 as a result. There is no such real number whose um, square will give us negative 2, and as such, the square root of negative 2 is not a real number. Now, whenever we are talking about an even root of something, the input is not going to be negative, else we are going to have um, a non-real result. So the input of any square root radical or any square root sign should always be either 0 or bigger than 0. So in this case, this is not going to be possible. But looking at this um, index here, this is 5, it's an odd index, okay? Which number can we multiply two times to give us, let's say, a fifth root or something? For example, we want to talk about 32 and negative 32. The fifth root of 32 is 2, and then the fifth root of negative 32 is negative 2. But it being this place was like 4, the result will be undefined. But what I'm trying to say here is that when we have a fifth root or an odd root of something, the input here can either be negative, positive, or even zero. But when once we have an even root, like fourth root or square root or something, the input here should not be negative, right? Great. So that tells us that this thing here can be any number it will, it wants to be. It can be bigger than zero. It can be less than zero. It can be equal to zero. So that tells us that for all x in R, then the fifth root of 2x plus 3 
is going to be defined, right? That means that the domain of f inverse of x which is actually the range of f of x remember we said the domain of the inverse is the range of that function right which is actually the range of f inverse is going to be still the same the set of all real numbers right is going to be a set containing element x such that x belongs to the set of real numbers with no exception all right great okay so the set of all real numbers is the domain of this function that is to say for everything that you impute you will output every element in the set of real numbers given that the input varies okay great all right um let's move on to the third question <laughs> 